In this section, we are going to cover AS3600 7.3, which is the tyres. Uh, so here are some uh, highlights from the Australian standards and the commentary. So we have reinforcement should be evenly distributed across nodal regions. Our reinforcement coincides with the axis of the tyre. At least 50% of the development length shall extend beyond the nodal zone. And the force is constant in the tyre, therefore tendons should be fully, fully developed beyond the centre of the node. So if you're designing for a particular amount of reinforcement, you have to make sure it's all developed for the full length of the tyre, as we're about to see in a computation. So back to the example we had earlier, here we're going to cover section 7.3 tyres. So earlier we had a tyre force of 766 kilonewtons. So the tyre force, so obviously the tensile capacity of the steel equals thigh AST times yield strength of steel. And that must be greater than T star. So we're probably best off working out for the area of steel required uh, for this tensile force. So here we have 766 kilonewtons equals capacity factor in this situation is 0 0.8 times A steel times 500. So here we have the area of steel at, so 3.8 times 500 and 766 kilonewtons, so times 1,000 divided by that. So we need 1,915 millimetres squared. So say we're going to have uh, maybe N28s here. So a steel equals pi r squared, r being say 14 for n28. Which works out to be 3.1 bars, so four bars, which is uh, you can say maybe two, two bars each face. In addition, as uh, shown in 7.3.3, at least 50% of the development length shall extend beyond the nodal zone. Also, uh, if you design for a certain amount of steel, the steel must be fully developed past the nodal zone to get the full tensile capacity of the, the steel design. So in this case, we had the, the node inside the wall. So uh, if we're struggling to get the full development past the node, it might be easier to move the node a little bit down further and into the slab to easily uh, have the development past the node.